Good evening, children. Uh, I'm up here in Balamori to tell you a story. That's right. So I hear your parents asking, but for how did you get to Balamori? Well, little hack. I can't drive, so about a month ago I joined the AA, went on Google Maps and picked a random address in Balamori. And then I phoned the AA today and told them I was broken down in Aberporth and I live in Balamori. So they came and picked me up, put me on a flatbed and drove me to Balamori. Save on fuel and also I can't drive. So if you want to get about and either want to save on petrol money or aren't allowed to drive, there's a little trick. So tonight I'm going to read you a, good, a bedtime story, now that I'm a celebrity, 200 followers on Facebook, 46 subscribers on YouTube, Boyakasha. The book is Gundrop Finds a Ghost by Val Byro. I was going to do it by torch, but I might just let a bit of light in. It's not actually dark. Okay, so if you're sitting comfortably, then I'll begin. Gundrop finds a ghost. Oh dear, this is a library book. And it's way overdue by about 30 years. Anyway, on a sunny morning in June, Mr. Josiah Oldcastle twitched his floppy moustache. Dan, he said to his grandson, let's go out today and visit Mildew Manor, the ancestral home of Sir Marmaduke Rickety Cobweb. It is a very old house and who knows, we might even meet a ghost. Dan was not so sure about meeting ghosts because they were apt to shuffle and moan around in the most alarming ways. But when he saw the bulging picnic basket, he was glad. And when he heard that they would go in gun drop, he was delighted. He jumped into the car and announced, I'm ready. Let's go. Mildew Manor was an awesome sight. You would have expected a ghost. A veritable host of ghosts to appear out of its nooks and crannies at any moment. Dan felt a little scared at the thought. Don't worry, said Mr Oldcastle. Just hold my hand as we go round the house. If we do meet a ghost, I shall twitch my moustache and frighten it off. So they parked Gundrop in a safe place and joined the other visitors to the manor. They walked through the hall and Dan thought that, he, that a fierce looking suits of armour might leap into any life, into any, li any moment. Right, try that bit again. Dan thought that a fierce looking suit of armour might leap into life at any moment and chase all the visitors away, but they remained motionless. In the drawing room they saw a vast fireplace and Dan thought that a ghost would slide down the chimney and begin to shuffle and moan, but there was not a sound. They went into the state bedroom and Dan half expected to see a ghost stretched out in a huge four poster bed but the bed was empty. In the picture gallery hung the portraits of all rickety cobwebs. One of them, Sir Crankshaft, had apparently been very fond of cars, but he was a bad driver and very forgetful. He went for a drive on the estate one day and walked back without his car. He said that he'd lost it, but he had forgotten where. Fancy losing a car though, Dan. Sir Crankshaft must have been very odd, old man. It was when they walked along the dark and shadowy passage that it happened. To their horror, they saw a swaying, shuffling, wavering figure gliding towards them. A ghost, it uttered strange moans, and everybody shrieked and ran away as fast as they could. Dan wanted to run too, but Mr Oldcastle stood firm and twitched his moustache. I can't twitch mine. 
Once, twice, three times, and a funny thing happened. The ghost stopped moaning and began to giggle. Then it burst into laughter, took its head off and tucked it under its arm. Its real head was still laughing. Foiled again, laughed the ghost. If I may say so, your moustache is so amusing that I can't keep this up any longer. Allow me to do to allow me to introduce myself. I am Sir Marmaduke Rickety Cobweb, owner of this manor. Dan was j greatly relieved to see that it was not a real ghost after all. My visitors really do want to see ghosts, explained Sir Marmaduke, and he escorted them to the house. Unfortunately, we haven't got one, so I have to pretend to be one myself, but it is rather wearisome to go shuffling and moaning around all day, just to keep the visitors happy. Now, if only I could find a real ghost, I would have a special room set aside for it with a notice saying, This way to the ghost. They had reached the car park by now, and when Sir Marmaduke saw Gundrop, he jumped about as if he had seen a ghost. What a beautiful car, he exclaimed. How my uncle Crankshaft would have loved it. How I wish that I owned a lovely old car like this. Mr Oldcastle understood the feeling and suggested Sir Marmaduke came with them in Gundrop to share their picnic. Look, there's Gundrop having their picnic. Cool car. They drove all across the estate and up a steep track towards the wood on top of the hill. This is a lovely spot, said Marmaduke. I haven't been here for years. Let's have our picnic. So they stopped Gundrop, spread a rug on the grass and settled down. Dan climbed into Gundrop's driving seat, his very favourite place. After the picnic, Sir Marmaduke got up. Do you mind if I do a spot of ghost practising? I still have a lot to learn. Not least to refrain from laughing when people twitch their moustaches at me. So, so saying, he started to shuffle and glide around, uttering his strange moans, while Mr Oldcastle twitched his floppy moustache at him. Dan found all this so funny that he laughed and jumped up and down in the driving seat. In doing so, he must have kicked against Gundrop's handbrake, because slowly the car started to move downhill. Stop, Dan! Stop! yelled Mr Oldcastle. Pull the handbrake, press the footbrake. Gundrop was rolling down the track quite fast now, and Dan grabbed the steering wheel. His leg was too short to reach the footbrake, and he had no hand spare for the handbrake. It was hard work steering the runaway Gundrop on the steep track as they reached a sharp bend. Dan was quite unable to turn the wheel quickly enough, so Gundrop rolled straight on, across the ditch and down towards the edge of the estate. Dan steered Gundrop between some trees and bushes, which helped to slow him down. It wasn't downhill anymore, and a very, and with a little bump, Gundrop finally stopped. He was hardly visible amongst the foliage. Where have they gone? called Sir Marmaduke anxiously. I've never seen this part of the estate before. They searched for some time. When Min Mr Oldcastle discovered Gundrop and Dan in the bushes, and was much relieved to find that neither of them had come to much harm. Well done, my boy, he said. You will make a fine driver one day. Dan was much relieved too, although his legs were still shaking a bit. He pushed his way through the foliage to see what Gundrup had bumped into. He looked, then he stared, and then he shouted excitedly. Come and look! See what Gundrop has found. A great big leafy, mouldy, mildew, muddy, beautiful old car. Mr Oldcastle stared too and twitched his moustache so many times that his glasses fell off. Then he started shouting. This is the veritable ghost, Sir Marmaduke. Come and see, a ghost. It was Sir Marmaduke's turn to sh stare and shout now. This must be the car which my uncle Crankshaft lost all those years ago. And your clever Gundrop has actually found it at last. He jumped about for joy. But why did you call it a ghost, he asked when he calmed down a bit. Because, my dear sir, replied Mr Oldcastle, this is a Rolls-Royce silver ghost. 
And so it was that Gundrup had found a ghost for Mildew Manor and a lovely old car for Sir Marmaduke. It is on view to this day at the manor, beautifully repaired and polished, in a room specially set aside for it with a notice saying, This way to ghost. People come for miles to see this real and lovely ghost, and Sir Marmaduke has no need to shuffle and moan around anymore. Do you want to see the ghost? Cool, eh? And there we have it. Night, night, little ones.